What is up, everybody? This is Prof G Rob coming at you about a week after the last time I did an I did a Prof looks or a first look. My first look. That's what this is called. Um, today we're doing put it uh, Puella Madoka Meiji Magica something like that. I've listened to covers of a song from this from Juby Phonic, I think. And that's my only experience with this. From what I gather, it's some kind of magical girl anime. Um, what am I going to guess? I'm going to guess that something along the lines of magical fairy girl comes to main character boy in a dream. And um, and yeah, that, that that's about all I've got. Maybe there's some kind of evil force that's invading the world. I, I'm drawing, I'm trying to infer off of what I've seen, and all I've seen is um, still footage uh, puppets of some characters, which were all girls actually, so take the main character boy that I said and make it main character girl. Um, some, so yeah, yeah, what am I even saying? Right, okay. So I'm trying to infer off of these animations that I've seen, or these puppeting of of still images to epic badass music i'm guessing that some kind of evil force is coming in I, other than that i know next to nothing the only thing i do know is that as i was clicking onto this video i did see something comes to somebody in a dream so that's going to be a thing i'm going to go get some snacks i'm going to watch for a bit and i'll check in with you again next time i actually have something worth saying <sighs> All right, I am back with some chamomile tea, some rice, and some ramen, so I'm sure this is going to be a good time. We are going to hit go, and I'll see you in a few minutes. All right, a uh, quick little check-in. I just saw the the opening scene, and then I watched the intro. Opening scene was strong. The music that was playing during it, the the crazy fucking bullshit... That, that's exactly the thing that I saw someone do a cover of. Again, I never remember the name of the artist who did these things. All of those anime song singers kind of blend into one in my head. But whoever did it, it sounded beautiful, and it did it justice to uh, how it was in the anime. Um, I I'm, lo I'm loving what I'm seeing so far. I really loved the crazy imagery of the dream world. I'm going to want to talk about this more in another video. I'm thinking, but whatever. I'll, I'll see you in a few minutes again. Okay. Fuck that line right there. <clears throat> and that's a little bit hypocritical of me to say. Because I've made this exact jokes. This exact same joke in um, fan fictions of mine. I've had like... The main character remark on how contrived and convenient something is, or say that he would never act in um, such a stupid or predictable way because that would be something reserved for characters in a fan fiction or whatever. But um, I don't know why, but seeing other people make similar meta jokes like that usually just pisses me off. I don't know what it is, but fuck that line right there. Otherwise, I'm loving this. All right. Look, I can tell you at this point right now, how far in are we? Okay, we're near the end. I don't think I'm going to be able to say anything. I think this is an experience that I can't really sum for you. I, I've, I've not seen enough things like this to be able to put into words what kind of experience I'm watching, but I'm going to try in a few minutes when this is over, but don't expect the best out of me, all right? Alright, similar situation to last time. I just finished the show and I can suddenly feel sleepiness crawling into my bones, you know? That hollowness when you feel like you might start to pass out anytime soon. So I'm going to quickly uh, tell you, give you a quick recap of what happened and what I thought about it. So, uh, Puela, Madoka Mag Puela Magi Madoka Magica is how I think you pronounce it. So, it starts out in this crazy Escher-esque dream 
where you're running through a screwy world, space time is all distorted and stuff, perception's all wonky and everything, and this girl sees another girl, um, fighting what looks to be some kind of big tree, which is like the kind of antagonist I would write. I've written trees as antagonists before, so it's pretty weird, but, um, so that's a thing. And then little ragdoll... That, that's, yeah, it looks kind of like a ragdoll cat, honestly, with long bunny ears. But a little ragdoll with red eyes is like, hey, you want to be a Sailor Moon? You want to be a Sailor Scout? I'll, I'll pick any planet you want. You, you can be a Sailor. And so the girl's like, oh, okay. And then she wakes up and she doesn't fully remember the dream. And then she goes to the weirdest school I've ever seen. Let me, let me describe it for you. In fact, I'm going to quickly go pull up a picture of it. Okay. Holy shit. Take a look at that. And excuse me for any sloppy editing that might happen. I have to walk all the way, like, around a little makeshift table that I've set up to eat my rice, ramen, and tea. Anyway, look at this building. Look at this school. What kind of school is this? You got glass cubicles. Massive glass cubicles. Or, like... You know those rooms in uh, those temples with the paper walls and, like, the intermittent wooden supports that the paper is stretched across? You see them in all the Japanese movies. All, all the samurai movies are sitting in there paint, uh, practicing their calligraphy or whatever, doing their stuff. Whatever those are called. I don't know if they're called dojos or what. But this is like that only futuristic and instead of paper walls they've got glass walls if this is a real school what the fuck what love what this aesthetic is ridiculous to have for for a gut for a body for an organization to have the money to throw to just have this aesthetic can you imagine if somebody, like, falls or trips into one of those walls and fucking shatters it, glass cuts through their arm, the hall, that that entire section, that entire middle area in, in the center of the screen, the screen would be off limits for, like, a day, as they have, like, a guy sweeping the floor, mopping the floor to get all the glass bits up. And you know they'll never get all the glass bits. You could nuke the fucking planet and you'll never get all the glass bits. There's, there's always one more. In fact, you know, it's funny I bring that up. Because before I started recording this, I, there was a bottle of gin, right? Just sitting on, and I'm like, you know what? You know, gin... I, I've heard good things. So I, I pick it up and I open the bottle. And you know what happens? I pull the cork out of the bottle and a decent chunk of glass just decides to detach itself from the bottle and stay attached to the cork. So then I pull off the, the glass... I pull off the cork and the glass comes with it and somehow that slices my finger open. I've got a cut on my finger. It, do, it didn't hurt or anything, but it, it was just big enough that whenever I move my finger, I can feel it open like it's a mouth. I can feel it. I can feel the pop, the the little, the, that tiny, insignificant little p when I, whenever I flex my finger. So, yeah, you know that area. That What I'm saying is this is ridiculous. There's no way that this is just some ordinary school. And I've heard, I heard it said that this was a middle school. So that's like, what? eighth grade to like sixth grade I, the education system's probably a million times different in japan i mean these girls look relatively mature but <clears throat> anyway l l let's take a take a step back so you have the dream sequence and then the girl wakes up and she doesn't remember it so then she starts talking to her mom she like wakes her mom up and they shower together or something they brush their teeth together whatever and the, the girl's talking about a friend and how a boy gave her a love letter or something. And the mom's like, ah, useless boys. If they can't confess their feelings in person, they're, they aren't worth their dick. So that's a thing. The mom, some kind of super successful. Let me just take a sip of my tea. Hold on. Yeah, because it's starting to get 
it's starting to get warm instead of hot, and that's that's when I need to get it because that's a very short phase of time. It's only the perfect temperature for an instant. It's either too hot for me or it's lukewarm and I almost don't even want it anymore. God forbid it gets cold, though. I, in fact, I'm going to take another sip. Ah, chamomile. I've only tried this recently, but uh, it's pretty good. I like it. Uh, anyway. Right, right. So... Mom is super successful businesswoman, owns the world. She's probably a big deal somewhere else. Who knows? I'll, we'll, I'll find that out as I go on. Um, the father, you know, I we, we only saw a little bit of the father, but from looking at him, I get the vibe that maybe he's like a stay-at-home dad. Like, the mom is really successful and hardworking and bringing in the books. So I, I saw him gardening. He was, like, grooming a tree or plucking some fruit, I vaguely remember. So I imagine he was like the stay-at-home dad, taking care of the daughters and the son. I think it was a daughter and a son. She's got a little brother. We we only saw him being a little kid, and he wasn't so bad, so I don't remember him. I, I only remember a child if they're annoying as hell. That's most children. Um, anyway, so after that, we carry on into step three of the story here, and it's the girl, main girl, Madoka, is her name, turns out. Her name is Madoka. So Madoka is walking to school with her two friends whose names I did not catch. One of them is a prim and proper, um, popular, pretty girl or something, and the other is some kind of lesbian or something. I, I saw that she, she was calling Madoka a naughty girl and, like, tackling and hugging her from behind, so maybe there's going to be some Yuri tension there. Um, what, what else? What else? So they talk about that, and then they go on into the school, and it's a normal day. Apparently the teacher has some kind of bullshit going on with her ex or something. They broke up because he didn't like the way she cooks her eggs. I don't know, man. That, I'm sure, is going to be a running joke. Anyway, then comes in the girl from the dream, and pink hair Madoka is like, hey, um, this girl looks kind of familiar, and... And here's where I learned something about Madoka. Something that usually turns me off of any character. She is very, um, what's the word? Uh, here, here's how I would describe it. If you look her in the eye, she'll look away. She doesn't want to pick a fight. She, she'll, she'll cower before someone who tries to intimidate her. She's not strong-willed. Which usually turns me off of a person. I'm, I, I respect strength, and Madoka doesn't look like she has it yet. So Madoka is cowering before this pretty girl who is apparently the new exchange student. And she walks in, and they glare at each other. And then all the new cla all the classes crowding around the new girl like, Hey, your hair is so pretty. What conditioner do you use? Blah, blah, blah. And a uh, new girl is like, Yo, Madoka be my bitch and walk with me to the nurse because Madoka is the nurse's assistant or something. And that's just an excuse to get her alone. And then new girl, whose name I did not catch now that I think about it. They said it, they made a big deal about it, but I just didn't care. Um, I wanted to call her Nemu for some reason. The fucking girl from Euphoria. Anyway, um, right, she's like, basically, long story short, the moment they're alone in a corridor... New Girl says to Madoka, look, if you value your life or anything in it, don't fuck with me. That's what she says. So it looks like New Girl is some kind of Shadow the Hedgehog to Madoka's Sonic right now. Like, Madoka is not a big deal. In fact, if anything, I was under the impression that Madoka enlisted to be a magical girl f for the purpose of helping New Girl. That That's the vibe I got. But I'll find out more as I go. So Madoka's like, oh, okay. And then and then we cut to a scene where Madoka's telling her friends at like a restaurant about this. And their friend, her friends are like, wow, what a weird fag. Ah, she's, she, 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 she shouldn't fuck herself. And so they're like that, right? So that happens, yada, da 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 And then Madoka goes with one of her friends, the lesbian, I think, to, um to a music place to check out music to get for a friend of theirs or something. Um, and Madoka's listening to music and she hears the rag doll calling out to her in her mind, right? She's like, oh, wait, is that in the background of my music? And she takes the headphones off and she can still hear it. 
and the rag doll is like luring her to some section of the building and she goes to that section of the building and then the rag doll falls out of the vent right so rag doll falls out of the vent madoka picks up rag doll and she's like is that you are you the one talking to me in my head she doesn't remember it yet and then out of the vent comes a bunch of chains followed by uh new girl new girl was crawling through the vent and she's in some kind of outfit kind of I, I hesitate to say like a yorha unit honestly it looks nothing like that but that's the way that i want to describe it because that's it the color scheme the color scheme it was like a yorha only ma uh, similar to the eliminator outfit only instead of black being the primary color, white is the primary color, and black is a complementary color on it. So she comes out in this outfit, and she's like, yo, get away from that thing. And Madoka's like, no, don't be a bitch. And so they have a stare, a standoff for a minute. Or when I say standoff, I more mean um, Madoka is sitting on the ground, co uh, letting Ragdoll sit in her lap for a minute. And the girl with chains is contemplating how she wants to strangle Madoka and that goes on for like a good five seconds and then oh god what did this girl even look like hold on I'm gonna move through the video to find the girl okay take a good look at this scene for a minute we're coming up next so um the lesbian I think that's who it was sorry I'm calling her the lesbian that's just the only defining character trait in my head for her right now anyway she uh, happens to see Madoka wandering off into this abandoned section of the building, and she followed her. She sees a uh, whips and chain girl, the new girl. She sees her about to beat the shit out of her friend, so she takes a fire extinguisher and bashes her in the back of the head. Not really. That's not really what happens. She just sprays her with a fire extinguisher, it, like catches her off guard, and then she whips the fire extinguisher at her. Not even exaggerating that one. So... Then she grabs Madoka and they start running. And then this shit happens. It's like fucking the world itself took some LSD and now weird shit's going on. I don't fully understand. It's like it's like some kind of this is some kind of corruption in the world. That's the vibe I got. Actually, actually, now that I think about it, I just picked up on some subtext. I I, I just picked up on a line that was dropped and now I fit it together. So I, I will explain right now from what I've gathered I think there's a witch right some kind of witch and the witch is conjuring this weirdness the witch is making people go insane or maybe they're attacking their minds maybe this is some kind of artistic representation of some kind of psychic attack on these girls where little puffballs from Yoshi's Island with mustaches are dancing on top of butterflies as they circle around the girls in the middle of some kind of fucking fabric. Some, the fabric of, re I don't know. I don't know what I'm looking at, but that's what it looks like is going on. So these girls are being assaulted by a witch right in their minds. We'd never see the witch. Her existence is only mentioned in passing later. We'll get to there. So, the two girls, uh, Madoka and Lesbian, they are standing there in the middle, and they're being circled by puffballs. And then, this girl shows up. Alright, girl on the right over there, yellow hair, fucking generica hair. What, what, was, what was the name of the pink-haired girl with a missing eye from Kill a Kill? I don't remember her name, but whatever her name is, I think the hair is style is similar. It's been forever since I've seen it, but she's got tornado hair loops and she seems to be some kind of authority figure among the magical girls. Let's just acknowledge there's some kind of organization of magical girls. That's something I think I can gather. So this girl shows up <clears throat> and she's like, oh, hey, thanks for saving Ragdoll. He's a friend of mine. I'll save his life in just a minute. And then she goes through a magical girl transformation, pulls out a butt fuck ton of fucking pistols, and she shoots to death all of the all of the puff balls. And then she heals Ragdoll. And then New Girl comes. New Girl is like, I have business here, glaring at Ragdoll. And um, what am I going to call 
Yellow Tornado over here is like, I'm gonna overlook, I, no, 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 no. She's like, the witch escaped, so you can go in your way. Her saying the witch escaped is what I'm using to assume that all of this nonsense is some kind of psychic attack by a witch. So, uh, new girl completely disregards that. She's like, I've got business with these two, or with these three, and yellow girl's like, listen, bitch, you're not good at reading between the lines. When I said the witch escaped, that meant I'm willing to overlook whatever the hell you did here. So, new girl leaves, um, and then Ragdoll, uh, looks to the two girls over here, to the, to, um, lesbian and Madoka, and she's like, hey, uh, actually, I think Ragdoll is a boy, so Ragdoll looks to them, and she's like, he's like, hey, guess what, I called the two of you because I want you both to be magical girls, what do you say? And it looks like they accept. So that's where the story is right now. What did I think of it? Um, as of right now, I, I think it's too big for me to talk about after just watching the first episode. This, this format of mine here, I think is better fit for more episodic shows. That being said, what did I think of the first episode of Madoka Magica? I thought it was a ride. Honestly, it's hard to describe the actual experience of it. I can't really convey to you the feeling that was punched into me when I heard that song playing during the dream sequence. I've heard that song play a hundred times by now. I love that song. It's something I play on the radio in the car as I'm driving to gyms or play other places. So, if that was the first time that I, that I had heard that song, then that would have astounded me. I would have... I would have... I would have loved it. I did love it, in fact. I enjoyed it a lot, but it would have been much more powerful if I hadn't been spoiled on that song. So, aside from that, what else struck me about Madoka Magica? Um, I can tell you the main character did not strike me. I'm not impressed by her yet. She hasn't earned my graces. I'm not, I'm not infatuated. I'm not cheering for her yet. She's, she's got a lot of growth to do, but she hasn't annoyed me. I, I'm I'm not I'm not very well disposed to her to that personality type of weakness. At the same time, she hasn't done anything to annoy me, so I've got high hopes for her. Um, honestly, I have no idea how old Madoka is, but if it's as old as I'm guessing it probably is, then I imagine this might be rife with cliches of anime. And if that's the case, then I'm not sure if that will disappoint me or if that will intrigue me to see how these cliches have come into being and how they've evolved, if Madoka Magica started anything. I haven't done my research on this yet. So let's move on to the next, uh, let's move on to the next segment. When you next see me, I'll have researched Madoka Magica. I'll have figured out, I'm not, I'm not going to do anything that'll spoil me, but I'll figure out like when it was made, what it's generally about, and you'll hear from me then. All right, Madoka Magica. So I've done a quick read through on the wiki and I've looked at a few reviews, just a few. From what I've seen, almost everybody who watches this show loves it, and that's pretty great. Um, it's not as old as I thought it was. I thought that I was looking at a 90s anime or something, like before I was born, but no, this is actually from about eight years ago. Uh, six years ago. No, five years ago. Five years ago. 2013. 2013, 2012. That general area is when Madoka Magic is from. So it's relatively new. It's generally well received, almost 100% well received. And it seems to be like. It, it seems to be um, a unique approach to the uh, Magic Girl, Girl stuff. So. I'm looking forward to that. I haven't seen enough Magical Girl to be familiar with the cliches, so it looks like I'm going to be spoiled. I'm going to be treated to a feast before I've gotten sick of the appetizers. So I'm looking forward to that. Will I continue to watch Madoka Magica? Yes, I will. From watching the first episode, I absolutely recommend you check out Madoka and see if it's for you. It's an experience, it's unique among anything I've seen, though I've only seen about 10 or 12 anime, 
So, <clears throat> yeah. I'll catch you guys in the next My First Look. What will I be watching next? Uh, gee, I don't know. Probably, probably going to check out... <laughs> Sorry, I actually hadn't put any thought into what I was going to be watching after this. But Kino's Journey looks like where I'm going to be going. It's short enough that I can watch it quick enough to move on to another anime and make another video. I'm not always going to be doing that. There's a lot of things that I want to watch. Really long shows like um, FMA, Darabara, uh, etc., etc. So there are going to be periods of time when I'm going to go a long time without making a video like this. Unless maybe what I'll do is I'll watch shows like FMA and Darabara in the background. I'll like watch one episode, one or two episodes a week or something, and then continue chugging shorter anime. I, I want to be able to put this out frequently enough that you can subscribe to me with the intent to watch only videos like this. With that said, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.